Hi, I'm Brad Steinman from Dimensional Fund Advisors, and joining me today is Ken French, the Height Professor of Finance at Dartmouth College and a director at Dimensional. Ken, uh, in the wake of the financial crisis, some investors are concerned about the so-called new normal economy, which they characterize as a period of below average GDP growth. If we are indeed going to be in a period of below average GDP growth, should we expect lower returns on equities as a result? The short answer is probably not. If you look back through time, what we see in the data is during periods of economic difficulty, recessions, even in, in depressions, going forward from a, any point at which you say, okay, we're really in a depression now, or we're really in a recession now, average returns tend to be high during those periods. Naturally, the average return is low in a period where you discover you're, you're in bad times. But once I know, okay, we have bad times, average returns tend to be higher. And the easy way to think about this is nobody's surprised right now when they get up in the morning and they say, yeah, we're in bad times. That information is already in the price. Okay, So if I'm an investor thinking about, okay, is do I expect high returns now? Do I expect low returns? The fact that we have bad news out there in the marketplace, that's already in the price. And now I say, okay, what is it that's driving expected returns? Probably in periods where everything's going great, people want to save for a rainy day. Well, I don't need to promise them that high in expected return to induce them to save. On the other hand, in recessions, things are really bad. People are laid off. This is when people want to be spending out of their savings, out of the stuff they put away for their rainy day. This is the rainy day. So in order to induce them to actually leave the money in the stock market, in order to induce them to defer that consumption, we have to promise them a higher expected return. And then there's a second effect that goes on as well. During this period of recession, there's a lot more uncertainty about what's going to happen in the future. Probably that uncertainty is going to push up the risk premium in the market as well. So in good times when people are saying volatility is low, I'm, I have less to fear, you don't have to pay me as much in terms of a risk premium. Now I'm saying probably because the empirical evidence here isn't overwhelming. The point estimates actually say, yeah, this is what's going on, but we don't get a big T statistic. But logically, it makes sense, and the data seem to support the conclusion that it's during bad times, exactly what you've called the new normal. I'm not sure it's going to be normal forever, but certainly during this recession that we're going through, during a bad time like this, probably we should expect a higher expected return rather than a lower expected return. It's not GDP growth. It's the prices relative to future earnings that are going to drive the expected return. So then what's the implication for investors who think they ought to tilt their portfolio to countries with high GDP growth in pursuit of high expected returns? Well, I, you know about the value effect. Value effect, that says companies whose book value is high relative to their stock price or companies whose earnings high relative to their stock price. There seems to be, first, there's a value effect around the world when we look at individual stocks. But there's also a similar value effect when we look at countries. So there's a nice paper by uh, Cliff Asnes, John Liu, and Ross Stevens. And what they do is they look at the returns to countries when you sort by ratios like the aggregate earnings to price or the aggregate book value to price. What they find is the same value effect there, high earnings price, high expected return, low earnings price, low expected return. And it turns out that's also a powerful way to sort on expected growth. That's why we call the companies with low earnings price, low book to market, growth companies. Well, the same thing happens at the country level. The countries that are anticipating high growth, it turns out they're also anticipating or should be anticipating lower expected return. So a an investor who's saying, I want to go to the country, that has high expected growth, that's a perfectly sensible strategy, but it's not a strategy that would be maximizing their expected return. 
Thank you very much, Ken, for sharing those insights, and thank you all for watching.